Hi guys, welcome back and welcome to a new episode of Roundtable Pot Racers. I'm so excited Woo! to be seeing you. I miss you guys so much. I'm here with Alexis and Julie. Hey. Um, we're going to talk about the Mandalorian trailer. I'm so excited, you guys. What about you? <laughs> oh my god. I When I found out that it was coming out in October, it was like such a happy surprise. Because I think they told mm -hmm. us like less than a month ago, right? It was like late, late August or something. So mm -hmm. I was like, October? That's right around the corner. That's right there. So I got really excited. <laughs> yeah, and I was actually like pleasantly surprised because I almost kind of like forgot, you know, with everything going on um, and like other Star Wars content too, like there's some other stuff that's kind of happening also, uh, High Republic and stuff like that. Uh, Thrawn, the Thrawn book just came out. I, I just picked up a copy of that. I saw it at Target. Um, I got to read it. Yeah, I actually got the um the special t the special. I'll gr I'll grab it in a second, <laughs> but I got like a it's like a first uh, first edition specialty. Um, but anyway, so I almost forgot. Like I'm, you know, just kind of went to the back of my head, and then this trailer is just like boom, like so good. I'm so hyped after watching this trailer. I don't even need to see any other trailers like that. Just that one. I'm so yeah. Hyped. I agree with that. Yeah, the same. And I'm glad that we actually didn't get it during Star Wars Celebration Week. Mm -hmm. because it was like too it would have been too obvious like we were all expecting that and I was just like oh whatever I was so into the news of the high republic those books look so cool like I can't wait oh my God, yeah. um and then Thrawn as well and I kept thinking about Alexis because I know he's a huge Thrawn mm -hmm. fan I'm still I'm still in the first one I, I gotta catch up really fast because that the book itself looks so pretty so I was super yeah. excited there's four Thrawn books now right or is it five uh so you have um pretty much yeah the thrawn the new thrawn trilogy yeah and the new one. um and then this new one which is going to be its own trilogy oh uh, okay it's called the uh, ascent let me actually grab it let me grab it real quick actually yeah. this is my star wars collection nice um, it's all these it's all these books down there. mine there <laughs> that's all um star wars Cool. Um, so this is the cover. Yeah, it looks oh, so nice. So pretty. And then it's got like the blue pages and stuff. Oh. So <gasps> oh, that's, that's so cool. And I then might it get has them. A, um, we're kind of catching up here. You know? Yeah. <laughs> got a nice little poster. Oh, that's that is beautiful. so cool. And I like yeah, that it's so blue and not red. So I'm a sucker for these. Uh, Lecter's edition, especially they seem to be doing it more for the Thrawn books and than, than the other books, mm -hmm. like. Um, I don't think um, Alphabet Squadron, I don't think it had like a specialty, like a first edition uh, and like the Aftermath novels, they weren't that either. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess uh, Star Wars particularly loves Thrawn more than the other. The other yeah. Books. Is this one by Timothy too? Of course. Yeah. Cool. Timothy Zahn, man. Nice. Zahn man. Nice. That's so cool. And these books take place before Rebels? Uh, or, yeah, ex okay. exactly. This is this one even is even further back. I mean, this is oh, so it's I, a a prequel to a prequel. Okay. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Gotcha. Um, I think the only book that's of the of the Tron of the New Thrawn trilogy that's not a prequel is um, is the third book. Okay. I think that happens after. I believe it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it happens after the Rebels, like what happens in Rebels. Yeah. Thrawn and stuff. So. Oh okay. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like yeah. a, what happens next. I, that's the one I'm reading, so mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, we need to do a podcast about books because I'm actually yeah. picking up um, today the the Clone Wars anthology. Um, oh yeah. So yeah. and because of everything and the new content, I want to see if we can go back to a. Uh, I'm gonna read it from a certain point of view. I have it there too. Book. I haven't read it yet. Because it's kind of shown us a lot of things or kind of Easter eggs to some of the things that we've been seeing lately, especially with like um, The Mandalorian even mm -hmm. um, with R5, which is one of my favorite droids. That yeah, get a instantly. Lot of <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's like, okay, we need to do a book club, book club podcast episode because there's so much good content out there and there's so many books yeah i have been very out of the star wars book game for a while like the last one i read was uh <laughs> resistance reborn and i loved it oh. but um i definitely want to read like alphabet squadron i want to get into the thrawn series so yeah i'm super down for that is the point point. and i know that they're coming out with a different a new 
new point of view, uh, set in the Empire Strikes Back era, mm -hmm. All right. which yep. I know you must be very hyped for, Anna. Yes, yes, yes. So excited for everything. Uh, but we're here to talk about the Mandalorian no. trailer. <laughs> um, yeah, I think let's watch the trailer. Yeah, super nice. Um, and see what's going on. Okay. Show me the one whose safety deemed such destruction. You must reunite it with its own kind. Where? This you must determine. The songs of Eon's past tell of battles between Mandalore the Great and an order of sorcerers called Jedi. You expect me to search the galaxy and deliver this creature to a race of enemy sorcerers? This is the way. You know this is no place for a child. He goes. So I've heard. Many goosebumps i oh, got yeah. with that trailer and there's so many things to talk about um but overall just one word how would you describe this trailer i'm gonna start with you julie curious okay how about you alexis um adventure like it's adventurous yeah yeah i thought about journey so mm -hmm. we can do a whole cool sentence with the word yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, no, it was, it was amazing. Let's just dig into it. Like for, with shots. I mean, from the beginning, we see the Razor Crest. Uh... Razor Crest. Yeah. Razor Crest seems damaged. Mm -hmm. um, when I saw, when I saw it, I noticed it right away. It was like when I saw it, uh, the trailer, maybe like the second or third time, I realized that the cargo bay or the hangar bay is open mm -hmm. and it's like jammed. It's like trying to close and it's like, and like the ship is just like, oh, you know, um, damaged uh and that I, that planet i don't know what planet that planet that is um people are saying that it's tython um that the moon or one of those moons was like bogan because tython has ashla and bogan to represent the light side and the dark side um so that's what i've just been hearing that some rumors that are theories that it's tython uh, but it's cool it's like it's like real world like real planet like it's it looks like almost like a like neptune or jupiter one of those planets it looks like they took the 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 images right from from outer space and they like it's really well done that mm -hmm. shot yeah i think it's it's so awesome to see star wars like live action and kind of taking those little details that we don't get to really enjoy in the movies as much like really take a moment and look at what planet they're arriving to I know there's, um, it feels like we're starting right where we ended. Like, you yeah. know, um, so that's pretty cool because I, I don't want to miss anything. I want it to be like, okay, you escaped. I don't remember it being damaged. So what happened or like, let's figure or if they damaged it before. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think it'd be cool if it picks up like right where it left off. Just because like with season one, we had that whole like episodic feel where like each thing was happening right after the other so like i think that would be really cool if season two kind of like ignored the fact that it was actually season two and continued just where season one left off 
Yeah, that we can watch the whole thing like they did with Clone Wars and it kind of be like a movie. Fluid. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah. And then it seems like we're back in Tatooine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks like it looks like he's landing in Tat- Tatooine. You see the the Bantha and Wait, but even before that that um that throat singing, I thought it was a didgeridoo at first. I'm like, "What? They threw a th- didgeridoo?" I I realized it right away. And then I realized oh, yes. That's the same um, band that plays in um, the la- uh, Jedi Fallen Order. At the mm-hmm. very beginning, Cal's like listening to some music on his headphones or something like that, and uh, that's the same band. They, yeah. they, they film got that same band. I guess they, you know, the Tibetan throat metal. I was wondering band. where I had heard that from too. I was like, oh, I guess I just heard it from Mandalorian season one, but it makes so much more sense if it was from. Fall in order because I remember it's in the opening sequence, right? When exactly. he's like on the train thingy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, and the great. guy, the guy's like, "Oh, you, the boss needs to see you," and then it kind of goes forward from there. And it's so fitting yeah. for like the more grungy, dark side of the Star Wars universe, I think. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys watch like the making of the Mandalorian, but I love how Jean Favreau and Dave Filoni kind of take into like the weird or like the less known about connections and tied it into the show so i'm very interested to see what kind of like connections we're gonna get in this one and it's cool that if because we're gonna see even things more in the trailer that they connect things with even jedi fallen order which mm-hmm. they don't i mean we saw it once in the movie with the thing that they that they put in the last jedi but that was pretty much it so that's also really cool yeah. And I hope, um, so in that scene when the Mando and the child are walking and they have the graffiti where we see little C-3PO in the corner. I didn't um, even notice that. Oh. Yeah, there's a C-3PO and there's like a stormtrooper in the graffiti section. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did see um, that. But the, so the, if you see like the skyline, I guess I want to call it, there's like a tower that looks like the tower from Lothal. Oh. I just don't want it to be that because, you know, the rebels went through so much to kind of free Lothal. So I am hoping that Lothal is like a free. wonderful planet right yeah. now <laughs> and not like what they show. But at the same time, it would make sense. Like, yeah, you went through it, you kind of liberated the planet, but now it's back to it being like a war zone. Right. Because that little tower at the end reminded me of that. Yeah, I also I also saw some theories that that would be Lothal because of the graffiti graffiti mainly, um, and yeah, like the architecture of the buildings, uh, which would kind of it would make sense though. You know, if Sabine and Ahsoka are in the season, you know, I could see that being some connective tissue for them going to Lothal. So uh, I know Ahsoka's confirmed, but is Sabine confirmed? I I believe that's her in the trailer. You oh. think it's Sabine? I, I, okay, I, I, so I, that's I, what we were gonna get to. Okay. Yeah. Um. I don't know if you would just want to get ready. Wait, wait, to no. It. Before that, okay, okay, it's so right. much. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, but that that's why it that's why I also thought about the same thing. But um, yeah, it's just gonna be very heartbreaking for me to see Lothal like that. Yeah. But before we get to the other parts, I love that the Bantha can move his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, mm-hmm. was he the one that just said where? Because like in that part of the trailer, it looks like he's the one talking, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, that's that. Those are details that are so good that we get to see Star Wars in this era. Like I mm-hmm. hate when people say like, oh, it's too much. I'm like, I don't care. Give me all of it, um, mm-hmm. because there's so much technology and watching after like how do they make the Mandalorian? They really take so much passion into their hardship and like. It's just a beautiful craft. I also agree because I want, I feel like I want more stories in this era that don't have to do with Jedi's and like, and and Luke's story. So I think like, this is really cool. Seeing the rebel side of it was really fun. Like, I, I like this era to like, learn more because it is a really big era and like a lot of things are happening to multiple people. So I, I agree with you. Like, it's it's nice to see it. Yeah. I mean, I'm good with not showing me a lot of the Skywalker. Right. But I do want more Jedis and Siths. <laughs> um, so she's opposite of you. She wants more Jedi and Siths. I, I, I know. Or, or like Force 
force yes. users yeah. that right. don't necessarily have to be Jedi, but they're more rogue. And yeah. Awesome. I meant more like uh like the the Jedi instance we know about. Like I meant like Vader, like okay. he should be oh, okay. doing his thing in the, you know, higher regions. <laughs> no, it's okay if they show him like a little bit like Clone Wars. Like I was yeah. happy with that. Just show his boot and that's that's it. <laughs> so then uh the trailer kind of moves on. Um it looks like he's also there's flying the razor crest to a to a snow planet as well. Mm -hmm. Um and the popular theory is that this is Ilum. Mm -hmm. And it does have and the trenches, so that would... It has the trenches, right. And the big trenches, too. You From that shot that you see it going down, it's like that big uh, trench. And then he's walking through with Baby Yoda, uh, or the child, I should say, um, walking through those trenches and, you know, just more, you know, more connecting. Because Jedi Fallen Order also goes, you go to Ilum as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and in the Clone Wars, that's where they would go into the Jedi Temple to build their lightsabers. Right. So it all would also make sense. And Ahsoka is known to go there quite often. So if we're going to bring Ahsoka back, if, do you want to find her in a Jedi Temple? Like, so maybe. maybe, yeah, maybe that's like his lead. Like his lead is that he has to go to this place that's like known to be a planet of the Jedi. And so he goes there first, and like I think seeing Ilum in live action would be insane, and maybe like a really smart move for Baloney and um oh my god, what's his name Favreau, Favreau. to to do because like it would make sense for Star Wars to like kind of introduce more like the the mystical Jedi side if they're going High Republic route because High Republic is obviously going to be more like mystical Jedi, -y, so. So, so I think we already seen Ilum in live action. Oh, we Ilum, have? Okay. Well, right. Ilum ends up becoming <laughs> the Starkiller base. Oh. So yeah. that's what that's what was my question. I'm okay. like, okay, okay, so is it Mando's fault that they know about Ilum? No, no, no I mean, because <laughs> <You never know. laughs> that would be too dark. Huh? Mando, it's your fault. It's your fault um, for Starkiller base. Well, no, so. Um, because Jedi Fallen Order, by the time of Jedi Fallen Order, mm -hmm. they're already um, excavating the 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 planet. Like you can see it from from when they're when the opening mm -hmm. shot, uh, well, the shot that they get to the Calcasus gets to Ilum, you can see the trench already being built. So this has already been going on by the time Mando, Mando presumably goes there. It's already been at least at least fifteen twenty years that the Empire slash First Order has been working on Ilum to make it into Starkiller Base. Oh, okay, I didn't know that because I, I had, I haven't finished the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay, that's good. Cause I didn't want to be like, I don't want it to be Mando's fault. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you led the Empire there. <laughs> yeah. It'd be okay. cool if we see some of the, like the clone troopers, like the special ones from Fallen Order in this season, like the red guys. The perch troopers. Mm -hmm. mm, I think maybe. it would be interesting, kind of, just to see, maybe like oh, yeah, some sure. some more like armor and stuff. Because like the only like other like troopers we've really seen are from Rogue One in live action. We saw yeah. a few in like the sequel trilogy, but I think that'd be pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, it would be kind of cool to see some perch, some perch troopers. It's just like story wise, I don't think it, it would it would work. Mm -hmm. uh, is you know, by then, Vader and Emperor are dead, and the Inquisitorious may be dismantled or whatever. So I don't, I don't really see Perch Troopers, but I mean, we do see Stormtroopers and Scout Troopers at, at least in this one, and it would be cool. It would be cool if, it, if they throw some other type, some new type that we haven't seen before. Um, you know, uh, yeah, that, I think that'd be kind of neat. But, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe. Uh, Gideon has like some special guard or something uh you know who knows huh, that's so many possibilities oh yeah but then we move to the ocean and now yeah. we're in Mon Calamari dock. territory that's what I'm thinking I'm thinking Mon Cala because you see those uh the the calamari you see the corn in that shot on the deck um and it's a, the giant water planet no, no buildings or anything so yeah, I think it's Moncala. 
which will tie into a lot of stuff that we've seen in Clone Wars as well. Mm -hmm. Which that's what I like also about the Mandalorian that it mm -hmm. kind of throws into like even with the dark saber with stuff that we see mostly from the animated. animation than instead of the movies. But then we have the shot that we've been dying to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> so Alexis, I'm gonna give it back to you. <laughs> Go for back it. Back to me. So <laughs> what I really like about it uh, about this particular scene or this part is is that uh, where the armor is kind of talking and she you know she says. Um, the songs of Eon, Eon's past tell of battles between Mandalore the Great and an order of sorcerers called Jedi. You expect <laughs> me to search the galaxy and deliver this creature to us? So uh, w the, when when the armor says Jedi, it it kind of pans to this character, which I believe is, is Sabine. Um, my very first like instant reaction was like, Luke? Like, because it you feel like she's like leading you on to say like okay this person is a jedi um and then and then the way that whoever this character is it looks exactly like um return of the jedi luke um when he goes to jabba's palace how luke has the how has the, the black hood, hood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly like the way it looks it looks pretty much like it's implying that it's like luke or you know they're kind of uh, you know alluding to that um, and then, then yeah, you see the character. So everybody right away was like, oh, this is Sasha Banks. So Sasha Banks is a WWE diva. Um, I, I wasn't familiar with her before uh, this. And uh, I believe she herself, I think, I think confirmed that she's in this trailer. Yeah, she first. tweeted it. Um, so, you know, the character looks like Sabine. Um, I mean, you know, just... Right. I mean, you know, you can't really see the hair, so you can't really tell 100%, but it looks like her. Um, and then one thing that I kind of saw online that someone kind of broke it down, you hear the Darksaber when when it pans to that character. Um, mm. You hear it, like, very faintly, um, but if you compare what's th that sound and, like, the Darksaber, it sounds very, very similar. Um mm. That's you know, really cool. Yeah. So I think that is Sabine. Yeah. Yeah. Cause when I'm, I started hearing and I'm like, oh my goodness, are they going to show Ahsoka? But I'm like, that would be too obvious. That it'd be too, I mean, yeah. It would be too. And then obviously you see the hood and there's not the Togrutas. The so mm -hmm. I was and like, she didn't oh. have the white marks on her exactly. face. Yeah. Yeah. It was a human. And, yeah. And then Regular I was human. like, I thought the same thing, and I saw people online saying that it was bearish, but then... I got bear. I was going to say, I got bearish vibes, but not in the terms of, like, how she looked, because, I mean, bearish is green, also, but, green. like, the hood and, like, the way she, like, looks and everything, I totally was going to say that I got bear bearish yeah. vibes. Yeah, but then I would have been upset that it wasn't, that she didn't have her face mm -hmm. marks, Um, so I was like, I thought the same, I'm, then I, my immediately, I was like, I feel they're also trying to trick us when they mention Jedi, but it's not so really true. a Jedi. Um, and I feel like Mando wouldn't feel comfortable. And that's why it replaced that. Like, you're telling me that I'm going to drop the child to Sorcerers. And it's like, okay, maybe with Sabine, he would feel a little bit more comfortable um, with whatever that means. Um, and Sasha, which I wasn't so familiar with it. I don't really watch WWE, but... I then looked at some videos and she could pretty much fight like Sabine. So okay. I'm excited. I, I think if it is, that's pretty cool. Maybe she's the one that takes him to Ahsoka. She looks like she could be, I, we knew that Sabine was very young in Rebels. So, I mean, it ties it together. I really hope so. Yeah, she looks like how Sabine looked when she was older in the end of rebels and she had like the short 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 like purple hair or green hair mm -hmm. something like that it was purple so like it, it makes sense that like she could be that i didn't even think about sabine because i wanted sabine to be in it obviously sabine's one of my favorites but i was like i wonder if they would keep sabine's secret like with ahsoka but this is still like technically a secret because we don't know who she is yeah right? So. Which, what I love is that she's wearing, looking like Jedi robes. So yeah, is or like Sith robes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> is that the influence Ahsoka has given you? Are you guys really, obviously, probably they're hidden at this moment. They're running away or whatever they're doing. Or are we going to get some, like, extra updates? Or, That's what <laughs> like, I want. what's going on? But it, 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 it was pretty cool. 
And like Ahsoka's in her Gandalf the White attire, so like Sabine, Ugh. if 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 she still is, and Sabine is in her like black robes, <clears throat> they would be uh look like a force to be reckoned with for sure. Yeah, definitely cool costumes. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be so much to go. Um, <laughs> but then we see um, which the other reason why I didn't think also it was a Jedi is because the child didn't react to it as I feel like he would have react to like a force sensitive person. Right. Yeah, so- that was my other thing I was gonna say. It's like he's he did like a uh oh like uh oh like, like who's um, that kind of like, thing. Something's up with this person like you know, something's up, like, heads up, you know. And, like, Uh, then she, she, like, disappears, so mm -hmm. that's not really, like, a Jedi thing to necessarily just, like, disappear suddenly. So, like, Sabine could have just been Sabine and snuck away while the crowd was passing, which is a very Sabine thing to do. Yeah, this definitely alluded to to some type of Jedi influence. I mean, whether it's going to be Sabine connecting the group to Ahsoka, which is the more likely option, or, um, or you know, I don't know, or maybe something with Luke, you know, but uh, maybe you know, I hope I hope they I hope they do per, uh, show Luke in this uh, in this series, maybe like a season three type thing. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely definitely think this is Sabine, and she's fo- maybe following the Mando, maybe she got a tip from someone, maybe Ahsoka d- directly. It would make sense because we know that Bogotan was the last one to have the dark saber. We know she had, you know, communication with Sabine. So I wonder if it is like, okay, now we lo- we lost the dark saber. They went through the siege of Mandalore, all of that, and it's like now we have other like things to do. If that makes sense, and her obviously is with Ahsoka, but then they also her thinking about Mandalore as as a whole. Or it she could be, sense. yeah. Or they could be like watching Baby Yoda and the Man and the Mandalorian, like so. Like she's there, like they know of him, and so he's looking for them, kind of thing. But they already like know of his existence because of Baby Yoda. That could yeah. be something. True. So many. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I didn't actually think of, of the obvious. Yeah, like. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, she's probably looking for Mando because he's a Mando. She's probably not even looking for the baby, you know, baby Yoda. Like, she's, yeah, she's probably looking for him. Like, this guy's a fighter. Like you were saying, like, she knows of him because of, obviously, the the bounties or whatever. Wow. I didn't didn't even think about that. That's, like, the obvious answer. Like, duh. But then her seeing, like, what the child could do and maybe his, him saying, like, oh, I need to take him to the Jedi, and it's like, well, I know the best Jedi ever. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I so. think that's going to be like a secondary thing. Like, oh, by the way, oh, he does that? Oh, I know somebody, you know, I got a hookup for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that'll be, that'll be really cool. Like, I also want it to be like Sabine with her Mando um, mm-hmm. pride that she's always had come out in the show as well. It would really be the perfect, like, group, you know, like the two Jedi and the two Mandos, like, just yeah. hanging out. Yeah. Yeah, because technically, isn't isn't Sabine the Mandalore right now? Isn't she the Mandalore right now? Isn't Bo-Katan still? Because she Cause... gave his her Bo-Katan is the last one to have the dark saber, so she's technically the Mandalore. Okay, so 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 Sabine gave it to Bo-Katan Sabine in gave Rebels. It to mm-hmm. Bo-Katan. Okay. Because she didn't right. want the responsibility and, like, wanted to continue with oh, her okay. family. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. But okay. the fact that she had the title of Mandalore and gave it up, like, that probably says a lot about, you know, like, she's probably very well known by Mandalorians. Exactly. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. And I didn't think about that. Yeah. Probably the Mando knows of her. Um, I oh, feel like the armor also, in, like, was very connected to the other clans Mm -hmm. so maybe it's like because all the mandalors are hiding right now so i don't Mm -hmm. know if there was some kind of communication where like we're all there's a secret underground communication as well we're all hiding but we need to protect this guy because he's in a bigger mission for mandalore and then the same thing with bo-katan like we lost the dark saber but we're we're doing this or whatever 
Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how, how it plays out. Mm -hmm. uh, but so then, yeah, Moncala. I think it's Moncala. They're on a ship, a little boat, if you will. Um, and it's fun. It's interesting because the next kind of series of shots um, kind of tie into this um, uh, comic book uh, with Luke. It's one, a part of the new series, a new, the new run. And Luke goes, uh, he follows this call through the forest to this uh, watery planet. He gets to the planet and he sees somebody and he just f simply asks, he says, are you, are you a Jedi? And this person just takes off in a boat that's very similar to this one that Mando and Yoda, Baby Yoda are on. Hmm. What's, it further, what's even more interesting is, is that that person that, that, that books it is actually a, an old Jedi. She was a Jedi Padawan, uh, but she's an old lady now. Um, and Luke, Luke senses the force in her and, Vice versa, the, the lady senses the, the, the force in Luke. So basically, she tries to drown Luke, I guess, to test him or something like that. Um, Jedi she things. drowns Luke. Yeah, Jedi <laughs> thing. Um, she drowns him in the in the very similar way that Mando seems to get drowned in the trailer with, with like the water coming up and him grabbing the grates. Same thing happens in the in the Luke, um, that Luke spinoff or whatever that, that comic was. I, I have to. Get the the number or whatever, but it's a we'll part of the story. image somewhere. Mm -hmm. We'll put it. I'll, I'll get I'll get it to you guys. But it's really interesting that ties mm. into this exactly. Like if if that character, the Sabine character, was older, I would have said for sure that it was Verla, which is the the lady from that comic. Um, and um, yeah, I just thought it was interesting because it's Water Planet, same boat. She tries to drown the the character the same way, you know. You know, has Jedi connections, so yeah. it was, it's very interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of give you guys the the link and stuff. That's why you're thinking about Luke, because to be honest, he didn't even cross my mind. Yeah, and then I was like, yeah, technically he's out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I I do have a a thing that I want for Luke in this series. I don't know if I want him to be in this series, but um, did you guys ever play like the Jedi Outcast series? I didn't. I know of it. But okay. that was a little, a little bit before my time. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm playing them late. But so in those games, uh, it doesn't really follow Luke. It follows this other character named Kyle Katarn. And he is a Jedi, but like he's the main character of this story. And he is really close to Luke because Luke was his teacher. And Luke is... It's like shortly after uh, Revenge of the... Nope, nope, Return of the Jedi. And so Luke went on to, like, make a school, kind of like how he did in, like, the now, like, actual universe. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it'd be really neat if they introduced a character similar to Kyle Katarn, because they were close in age, too, so it wasn't, like, that far off. I think um, Kanan was actually based on him, loosely. Mm -hmm. So it'd be really cool if, like, that. Luke is already starting the school somewhere, like, elsewhere and we just hear about it maybe kyle is like one of the characters in the school and it's like that is going on kind of yeah because it'll be really hard to cast somebody as luke right now right knowing that like mark hamill is luke and people get very you know now i know there was some episodes of clone wars that never aired that were kind of made and it was about a female jedi that was mm. also like a rebel Jedi kind of thing, like Qui Gon. I know okay. it was developed by Dave Filoni. It never aired. It, I don't think he even got to production, but I know I read about it when all the stuff for Siege of Mandalore came out before they made it, like all those little um, computer graphics that we we saw in the past. Mm -hmm. So when I thought about that, I also was like, wait, could it be this girl? Because I know Filoni had a story or. Or like a three episodes about a female Jedi that ran away. So oh, wow. I was like, but then I kept thinking Sabine, Sabine, Sabine. But now that you're talking so much about Luke, I'm like, why didn't even I think about poor Luke, man? <laughs> like he's out there doing his thing. Yeah. So. I would like yeah, them to mention like Luke and Leia, but I don't think I want them in the series. Just because what you said, like casting them would be like a nightmare and... Even if they get Mark Hamill, like, what are they going to do? How are they going to do that? So it'd <laughs> be a little too complicated. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think 
kind of touching back, back on your point, Julie, I don't think um, they're going to show him building the, the, the Jedi Order just yet. Um, kind of working back from The Force Awakens, it was six years before The Force Awakens that Luke had the temple. Um, sorry, I'm just kind of thinking about it to see <laughs> if it is possible because... <laughs> You know, so so Kylo has been born already by this point. Kylo's probably four years old, four or five at this point. Um, so it technically so, lies into some of the stuff where we saw in Bloodline. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, no, it's because Bloodline. Bloodline was yeah. Bloodline I think was also six years before the Force Awakens. So this is all still a little too early. So the point I'm yeah. trying to get to is that I think it's too early for for Luke to be having the temple right now i think he's still in the in the and the going exploring mm -hmm. you know different force religions at this point still okay um but i i would trust me nobody would love to see it more than me but yeah. practically and kind of how it is with already in the story i don't think it's gonna it's mm -hmm. gonna happen yeah. i think i think the force stuff is just gonna be pointing to uh ahsoka i think that's gonna be like the big reveal if you will um and kind of advancing baby yoda's like story i, th I think ahsoka is going to be key to that yeah i also don't think they're gonna deep deep in the jedi storyline yeah, i don't because, think so yeah. uh, ahsoka is going to be the most jedi yeah. that we get with this. i mean realistically and i'm totally fine the most with it jedi. yeah <laughs> um okay but i mean there's a lot of good things i hadn't thought about so yeah then um going out of the water planet we see the race across again um flying next to two beautiful x-wings mm -hmm. x-wings yeah new oh republic. my goodness those new republic so x-wings look so good and then when they go to a tag mode which is yeah. like whoa where are we at that like, you guys uh -huh. are going directly to attack mode and just seeing that oh it's so beautiful but it looks like they're attacking him right yeah is it just for me? sure okay. Cool, that's my it looks like he's like riding with them and they like are pull up like cops and then they put their lights on <laughs> yeah that's he's exactly like, oh, what i got <laughs> and because after it's like it's the the what in do you the call clouds it? the chase yeah the chase mm -hmm. right. which the clouds kind of reminded me of cloud city a little bit oh yeah yeah, so I think I think it, you hit it right on the head, Julie. I think it's like they're just like cops. Like mm -hmm. he probably went, he probably maybe fleeing some bounty hunter or something got into New Republic uh, area, a uh, zone, if you will. X Wing saw him, said, "Hey, you know, pull over, pull over, whatever." Yeah. They, he probably's like, "Nah, whatever. I'm gonna ignore them." They pull up and they're like, "All right, last chance. Like you better, <laughs> you better, you know." And then probably the next scene after is is them chasing. Uh, mm -hmm. chasing him because he's running away um, which I mean I was actually um, watching a little bit of, of season one yesterday and uh, he says it like he says oh the new republic oh that's a joke so he probably doesn't even respect these x-wings you know oh, that is probably, true yeah he's probably like new republic psh, whatever like peace and he just mm -hmm. probably books it and that's probably the chasing but I got it even still I got excited I'm like yeah x-wings <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I got excited. You think about a team up, you know, you think about, yeah, the good guys are, the good guys are together, <clears> you know. But right. it's going to be cool if the X-Wing pilots are not the good guys in this situation. So, like, we're going to see X-Wings and, like, rebel fighters being the bad guys. Because, like, he's such at a neutral point that, like, it would make sense that the rebels and the Empire aren't really in his favor. Or that yeah. everybody has their own... Exactly, yeah. Like, good thing that they're doing but not necessarily it's what is good as what is bad which is the common theme in star wars it's mm -hmm. like they're trying to do something that for them is good but for mando is not um so that's that, that'll be interesting to see where are they at this time that they're trying to take down the mandalorian and not even realizing that he's with a jedi with a little jedi or for sensitive potential, child. potential jedi mm -hmm. exactly so it, it'll be very interesting or to see if they're not even real rebels and they stole those sh ships so you never yeah, know too. yeah <clears throat> and then we see mando um kind of oh, so we see kara and, and grief mm -hmm. yeah because we see him like going with a scooter 
through what it looks like Tatooine, but then we go to Navarro. Navarro, yeah. Yeah, it looks like Navarro. Yeah. And then you get Kara and Grief with their snazzy new costumes. Mm-hmm, their little smirks. Yeah, yeah gr- Grief with his go- his goatee, you know, <laughs> just letting, letting it ride. But I don't see new costumes. Yeah, they're new. Um, both her, of them? Um, yeah, both of them. Um, Kara's, uh, she has like now, she has like uh, armor here. It's like it's like a little bit different um, and like a. Different... Oh yeah, I see it in the in here, kind of. It's okay. like a it's like armor here, and then I don't have it pulled up, and then. No, because uh, before grief... it was only one side, and now yeah, it was like a shoulder two. piece, right? Yeah, okay, right, I like see a pauldron. It. Yeah, and then grief, I see it. Yeah, grief uh, now has like a red, like kind of like almost like um. Under under thing. Yeah, he has like red, and then um, and then yeah, he has a goatee, and then yeah, so they have new costumes, both of them. Pretty awesome. Yeah, it's, which is cool, you know, seeing them together. So now you know, there's no hard feelings or whatever, and we're all in the fight together. Yeah. I guess it's gonna be interesting though to see how grief kind of like goes along with this. Like, yeah, okay, we know he's cool with Baby Yoda, but like, is he gonna be on the ship too? Like, is he gonna like, you know? Do the young man's game and adventure around with Kara and Mando, or is he just gonna be like, you know, like do you visit him just for, you know, every episode, every couple episodes or I something? I mean, is Kara like confirmed to travel too? Because I feel like she's just gonna be like every so often. Also, I don't know. I thought she was gonna travel with them all the time, but the way last season went, I was like, mm, maybe not. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like she's there like taking care of that side of the planet right still so much in imperial uh base because then the next scene it has a beautiful tie fighters yeah um, so beautiful kind of open a uh, landing um so we still I, I, see i put here on this part i put uh, empire porn <laughs> <laughs> it is it's so mm-hmm. high fighters stormtroopers scout troopers on speeder bikes the klaxon I... in the back Ugh, it's yeah so good. it's so good even like the stormtroopers running through the imperial base which then i'm like okay there's still some left what if that's uh, a crashed one so they use it as their like base of operations but it's but down maybe um, not crashed though because the lights are on that's true yeah, i don't think it's crashed yeah i i think it might be the um... It actually might be two things. Originally, I was thinking this because uh, in the in the um, Entertainment Weekly uh, photos we see of Gideon um, in the back of him, like in the back, even though it's blurred out, it kind of looks like a Star Destroyer. So mm-hmm. when I saw this, it kind of seemed to me like the Stormtroopers are running through a Star Destroyer. But then the Scout Troopers look like they're launching f- from a base, mm-hmm. like... Um, and yeah. it also looks like some it looks like a volcanic planet. Uh, there's some lava flowing um, in the speeder chase scene. Uh, so it could be. I I don't know exactly, but maybe they're I mean, not connected. You know the beauty of editing. Or maybe both. Maybe there is a star destroyer that Gideon flies around on, and then this is the base. I don't know. Right. That he reports to or something. Yeah. Yeah. I so many things. Yeah, because then he's using uh, his Mando, um, what's it called? The jetpack. The jetpack. Yes, we see the jetpack. Uh, that was one. so cool. Yeah. Um, well, he finally then... got he finally got one of those. Yeah, yeah. He finally got one. <laughs> like, I gotta get one of those, and now yes. he's got one. Um, which it was cool because the last episode we see him using it, but it was just like momentarily and he was still kind of getting used to so now mm-hmm. it looks like he's just a pro at it um kind of like Ezra okay. <laughs> um and then we go back to the planet which I looks like Lothal or maybe the other planet you said Alexis um and he has somebody like hanged but yeah. it looks like he's also saving him yeah it's like, kind of because... like untying him from the top no say yeah, um, it's, I think I'm, I'm with you, but go ahead, Julie. I, I was going to say, like, it kind of looked to me like he was like, you know, he's not the best guy, right? <laughs> so he probably has this guy hung up upside down trying to get information. And when he shot, he shot more like the light post. And I can't imagine that he would like miss a shot like that. Mm-hmm. So because yeah, sure. I, I, I don't think we see the guy like fall like uh, like as Mm-mm. if the rope breaks. So maybe he's like this guy is like somebody that has information on like the Jedi and 
maybe he's somebody who has information about Sabine and he's looking for Sabine. Because, I mean, if it is Lothal, she is known to be there. So, I don't know. It seemed more to me like he was trying to get information than save the guy. I think that I think that's the case. Um, it it <clears throat> yeah, seems it like sense. yeah, because he's not shooting to kill. He's kind of like almost like he's he's doing intimidation tactic, right? You know, shooting just like outside the of where the guy would is, flaw, like fall on the guy too. I'm scared because yeah. you don't right. know what's going on. He's blindfolded. Yeah, but um, but I want like that leads me to wonder who the actual guy is. Um, mm -hmm. when he shoots, you hear like a little sound bite of a Tuscan raider. Um. Mm -hmm. You hear like the of a Tuscan Raider. Okay. <laughs> Excuse my Tuscan. I'm not <laughs> that was good. Familiar. Yeah, it was uh, good. <laughs> um, but you hear it, and it's like, oh, okay, cool. And it has like kind of like he, he kind of is like wearing like like a little like brown like teal mm -hmm. um, brown beige. I meant to say. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it kind of I I could see it being a Tuscan. I mean, so they don't show it a hundred percent well, but just based off of that little sound bite and. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, it looks like they're on that Lothal planet, so I don't know how Tuscans would get there or would be there. So, hmm. well, actually, wait, Lothal is a, de a desert planet, right? Yeah, it has desert, it, yeah, it has desert in it, but it's is, is it classified as a desert planet? I'm no, not... no, okay, anyways, whatever. Just think, yeah. I'm, think <laughs> I'm talking, I don't think so. I'll Theory, theories. yeah, but then we have one of the my favorite shots from the trailer. And it's minute 122 because it <laughs> gave me <laughs> it okay. gave me all of the Ahsoka vibes ever because he's going to what it looks like it could be a Jedi temple mm -hmm. and it has like the cave is like broken into like that triangle cave where Ahsoka goes in after fighting Vader. Oh yeah, because obviously I watched that episode a thousand times. <laughs> um, but that's like I have. Like if you break that shot, there's like a, like it goes from like zoom out to zoom in, but it, right. I don't know why I thought um, it looked like when Ahsoka was going in. I know it, might, it can't be the same um, cave oh. as Ahsoka because this was where she was in the temple all the way over there and it was a Sith temple. But, but maybe, yeah, maybe they did it on purpose to tell you like this is also a temple. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, all the temples, even when we saw it in Rebels and Clone Wars, kind of have that entrance. And then you have like when they put the Mandalorian at the end, the A, it looks like a little cave, and that's so Filoni. So mm. that's what I thought about. And I'm like, okay, because it looks like he's going into a Jedi temple. That's I think it's I the one on Ilum, probably. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. I think this is so, a continuation of that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. I, I don't think that's Lothal. That, it's an ice. It's an ice. No, no, no. I don't think it's Lothal. I think it was like the Jedi Temple in Ilum. But it oh, looks okay, like. Okay. But it's still it a temple. Like yeah. It, oh, it okay, okay. gave me like the Ahsoka vibes of um, like, the cave. I. I want to say no. I want to say no because it. Uh, I mean, it looks like a natural formation, but on the same time. It, it could be like a secret entrance to the Jedi Temple on Lothal. Like uh, going back to that Clone, War Clone Wars episode. Um, Wait, to Lothal or Ilum? I'm no, sorry, Ilum. 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 Okay, okay. You're right. Yeah, Ilum. The um, the um, the Jedi Temple on Ilum. Yeah. Kind of had this. It, yeah. It, I, I need to watch that episode mm -hmm. again because Me I too. think it's like I think it's it's like this where it's like tall uh, ice oh, yeah. wall, and I think you have to use the Force to actually get in it. Yeah, I remember when I played I correctly. Fallen Order, I was very confused as to how to get in, and I was, like, running around the map the whole time, like, <laughs> where is the entrance? So, yeah. so, I think this is Ilum, and I think yeah, man, that would be it's so cool. the caves of Ilum. That has the Jedi Temple, which would make sense. Yeah, exactly. And I, I love the shot when Mando is going in, and you see the snow in his helmet. Yeah. Like, the eyes, like, Like, it's freaking so, cold Like, there. it's freezing. Yeah. Yeah, it's like frostbite. Um, how cute yeah. would it be if Baby Yoda just like picks up a, like a, a crystal and like it's a Kyber crystal, but you know nobody Aww. knows. And he's just like chewing on it and he like, keeps it. Uh -huh, and he and keeps, keeps it. it. Mm -hmm. He's like, this is mine. But <clears throat> obviously, he doesn't do anything with it because he's a baby. And <laughs> Mando's like, I don't know what that is. Sure, whatever. Yeah. Stop yeah. chewing yeah. on my freaking ship. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but we go from ice to fire. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Comet. <laughs> <laughs> yes um because uh yeah it's going down on fire mm -hmm. yeah do you guys think that's the razor crest 
Oh yeah. It looked it, like looks like it. I think it's the right hardest. But I don't know. Like I want them to I think they want us to think that it is, but it isn't. Oh. Wait. Hmm. It could be it could be the um, it could be the Mando crash landing That's um, what I meant. on Ilum. Because in in the shot uh before there was a shot before that uh, Mando's kneeling next to Baby Yoda, which is kind of cool in itself because it's kind of showing a little, you know, a little bit, almost like a, some love, like a little friendship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so you see in the back of that shot, you see the 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 Razor Crest, like almost like crashed, like like it crash landed, you know. So I, I'm wondering if this is that, if this is that crash landing, and mm, yeah. the the atmosphere kind of looks mm -hmm. like like coldish. It doesn't look it like cloudy warm. blueness. Yeah. So so yeah, I, I yeah. I, guess I would say that crash landed on Elm in that that scene. Yeah, me too. Because now that I have like a shot, it looks yeah. exactly like the Razor Crest. Oh, but then it's cool because then the next shot is the fight scene mm -hmm. yeah this is cool I, I i really wanted it i was really wanting to get into this one um, go for it because yeah. uh you, you get that cool kind of shot of of, of mando kind of entering the, the arena uh and then you see the flags up top which reminds me of the mas canada i was um, thinking that in and and then the yeah then you see the two gamos going at it and the I think the first time we've ever seen them I guess shirtless, uh, looking buff, mm -hmm. uh, you know, looking very buff. I've I've always thought you know Gamorians were like fat, you know, blah. yeah, like greedy, like yeah, yeah, yeah like just gluttonous, just like uh, just like bouncers, not really <laughs> fighters. Right. And then here, freaking going at it, it's like uh, it's it's and yeah, their it's weapons cool. are cool. Yeah, Those it's acts. like a vibro. Yeah, it's a, I, I think it's a vibro act. Yeah, like. for sure. Cause it has like a like a, yeah, they like a like, little <clears throat> and they like clash against each other yeah so, i see that and it's cool to see them again too because we haven't seen them like in a while right yep. and like they haven't gotten like as much attention so i like mm -hmm. that again the connections of those characters yeah. that are just out there but hey let's use them because mm -hmm. yeah everybody exactly. counts and it's cool that like the last time we saw them was at like it's they're iconically from like jabba's hut which is very like underground criminally and like you could already tell like here they are again at an underground criminally kind of place yeah and then we see the mando sitting down next to so he's an abyssian okay i was like, just gonna ask what race is that because I... he's an abyssian because I, I couldn't have looked into it because when i saw the trailer the first time i real i recognize the character not the character but the race right the race away. yeah i mean it's a cyclops and like mm -hmm. modern like earth-like mm -hmm mythology but it's an abyssian um and we first see them in a new hope okay um you see it in the cantina, in the cantina? Okay. Yeah. yeah like you know obviously you see them like you know yeah i want to see back more... then. <laughs> yeah i want to see more cantina races because i want I, like the the devil guy that was like actually red with like the horns he the wasn't oh, yeah, in the season one yeah <clears throat> he wasn't like a dat a dat the dathomir no that's they're devaronians they're called yeah Devaronian. those are cool i want to see the werewolf <laughs> We see the we see Devaronians in um, in Rebels. We see it in uh, the first season of uh, I forgot his name, Basio Bato or something like that, uh, where he helps um, he helps he he's actually from Lothal as well. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yes, that he's yeah. in the underground mining and he's always ah uh, what's his name? The, um, I think it's like someone with a V, but and, yeah, but, but any, something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he he's the one that I guess um, buys the puffer pigs. Mm -hmm. It's like the Lando. There's like a Lando. Yeah. Or whatever. But anyway, so I digress. Um, yes. But this this is basically more like connections to the the, mm -hmm. to the original trilogy. I mean, uh, Filoni and, and Favreau have done an amazing job connecting and really paying tribute slash connecting to the original trilogy mm -hmm. um, in a way that we really haven't been seeing like from from exactly. these. New from this new I agree. even though it's old it's new it's refreshing it's not right. like oh here i'm gonna show you all that you loved it from the original trilogy you know let's like just put some out here and out there and just mm -hmm. make it all blend and work it out this feels like it's the same universe in the same time period mm -hmm. whereas like a lot of the other things we've seen don't and i really appreciate the fact <clears throat> that this show sorry my throat's like Ugh, that we're going back to like the practical makeup and the practical effects 
<clears throat> versus like the CGI stuff that like obviously the prequel is known for. But the sequel trilogy did it too a little bit. So like I think because it's so practical and like it it doesn't it looks amazing, but like not probably like, you know, computer amazing. And I think that's what really like brings it all together. Yeah, it's on brand. I mean, yeah. like it you see all this stuff and you're like, yeah, that, that's Star Wars. I mean, that's Star you see um uh, the the gamos like just the just the cinematography and everything and like the mm -hmm. shots I feel like are very the uh, I mean they did it they did it in Mando season one so I, I don't I mean they're obviously you're gonna keep going with that it's working yeah yeah working out so yeah he's talking to I can never say it Abyssian Abyssian, Abyssian. that's a yeah, cool name Abyssian. too well he's not he's that's not that's not his name I no think yeah the race, race. Yeah. the race like Abyssian gom ser or something some weird name yeah um but yeah the yeah and and it's like it's he's cool he's like uh there's no place for children mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and then the other guys come out and and then we have a little bit of star wars in it where like the mando is getting ready to fly the fly birds or something Ooh, uh, whistling birds whistling I yeah yes. and then and then baby yoda is like <laughs> Like, um, I nope. loved that. And I love that he knew like to do that. Like right, he yeah. saw and he's like, oh shit, time to go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know yeah. better this time. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was classic little Star Wars comedy. What's what's also neat is, is that um is that we as the audience kind of hear what baby Yoda would be hearing yeah, if, and if it's we were him. Blacked and yeah, heard. like blacked out, you just hear like bing boom bing ow, 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 you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like I we're seeing that. it from his perspective. And I love that we don't see it. I really like that because if we end up seeing it in the show, whether it's a black screen like that or like we end up seeing it in the show, I think it's cool because like we're going to get to see it then. Right. Yeah. Not like just in the trailer. Yeah, because then we see him like fighting and then throwing his knife to this uh <laughs> to this guy that kind of has like the race of Maul, but no, I, it's the other one. Yes, yeah, so I forgot. Eso. Zabrak. So, yeah. Is it is it Mola Zabrak though? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh uh, well, um, he's he's technically he's, he's Dathomirian. Dath right. Yeah. Right, but he's his race is Zabrak. Right, because Zabra Dathomirians take Zabrakians. Yeah. Yeah. To, to make from, them from Iridonia and all. Yeah. That. Yeah. Right. Um, but it's cool because you see him throwing, I guess, a knife. It looks like it is. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a vibro knife, actually, because you hear like a like a zzz, uh -huh. like a like a zzz. yeah. Uh, and plus, it he falls right away, so it right. couldn't He's be dead. just a normal yeah. knife. It could be like, no, you're you're down. Uh, yeah. Um, it's cool that it's a he's... Star Wars knife. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool that he's not like painted either. Like that is he's just like from the original race too. Like it's right. cool to exactly. see that. Plus, I want to well, see more of them anyway, because, I mean, you know me. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, this is actually the second one we've seen. Right. Uh, yeah. Remember, the first one we we see is Cara Dune fist fighting. Uh, he's super actually, buff guy, actually, right? Yeah, but he's a, he's a Zabraki, too. Right. That, that, guy, yeah. that guy she was fighting. So, yeah, it's really cool to see them kind of use more. Um, yeah, races. More, more alien races. Yeah. That's what more. I wanted from um, the last Star Wars movie. I wanted more Rise alien. Mm-hmm. I wanted more alien races specifically because we didn't get that a lot in the sequel trilogy. We didn't get like Twi'leks or th whatever Thrawn's race is. Like we got very much just humans and then like obscure like right. alien aliens. Um, so. Yeah, Abenedos, Abenedos. Mm -hmm. Those were like the only ones that I saw in mm -hmm. in the sequel trilogy. It was like humans and abandonos and then droids. Yeah. But then I feel like this is the difference of really having Filoni on board. Yeah. So, like agree. this is why I and I've been saying this since you guys know me. Like I feel like the next trilogy should be directed by Filoni because I think so too. Uh, he would be the perfect like look, I know it's him and John Favreau, but when it comes to this aliens, when it comes to like little details like that, I feel like it's just Filoni like working his magic. So I've loved that he's been able to do that with the show. And this show has become even more Star Wars than some of the last movies. And yeah. don't hate me for saying that. No, I, I agree with you. Cause like, <laughs> like what? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like if they do a ne the next sequel, the next uh, trilogy, film trilogy should be an alien lead, I feel. Because 
Come on. I just like I appreciate that the Mandalorian has so many connections mm -hmm. to stuff that us like crazy fans like the three of us can like really dissect like look how long we're talking about a trailer that's only not even two minutes right. like that's how amazing i feel like having <clears throat> someone like filoni bring up a show like this makes a huge difference mm -hmm. this is what happens when you have love and mm -hmm. direction yeah like when you know what you're doing. <laughs> All my Rambo was just to that. Thank you, Alexis. <laughs> uh, I missed this. Okay. So then this is the way. Yeah, this is the way. Mm -hmm. I actually don't think um, he says it like in that scene. I think that's okay. just. Oh, it, yeah, no. I think. Like, it, it doesn't <clears throat> sound like he says it like after like throwing it. Like he says it's like so perfect, like as if he just didn't fight like five people yeah there. <laughs> i feel like it was more of like a response to the 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 oh my god the um the armor yes because because yeah she had like her whole little monologue and then it's like all the fighting and stuff like that in the scenes and then it's like maybe maybe not his response directly in that moment to her but like it is technically a us. response to the conversation yeah right it's like for us like, right yeah like he's like acknowledging like everything like yep yep this or is it, it. this mm -hmm. is what i'm this is what i'm about now yeah or it could be the closing from like in the beginning of the trailer we have all the talk about the armor being the jedi and he right even though he doesn't really understand it it's just like okay this is the way like i just need to accept my um direction or goal next goal whatever mm -hmm. mission yeah yeah because then we see the trailer i mean the title of the show which mm -hmm. gave me ahsoka vibes because it's like that triangle <laughs> forever the caves that are triangle it's gonna be ahsoka for me so <laughs> this is like a, this is like a star wars cons conspiracy anna sees triangles and everything and she doesn't like, like ahsoka. Ahsoka. <laughs> hey ahsoka's triangle. name has ahsoka. a name you know ahsoka a eh? and it's always <laughs> like i'm gonna send you a picture guys so, and we can put it somewhere in mm -hmm. here um because like this and i'll share my screen yeah it's an updated, updated you see, Mando like, logo. here i'm like yes look at that yeah. <laughs> look at that you're right <laughs> um it's the same one that we see like in and you know and there's so many shorts i mean shirts from ahsoka that has that same thing i don't know I, I, you guys know me i'm a huge ahsoka lover so i'm gonna see everything like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah that was cool um, we see the whole title, October 30th. Yeah, the 30th in just I need a, a little over and, a month. It, well, something else to note, too. On the, the title of The Mandalorian, there's, like, smoke coming off of it. But what yeah. if it's not smoke? What if it's, like, the ice from Ilum? Like, the steam of, like, breath and stuff like that. Ooh, that's mm. that's a good... Yeah, I actually didn't catch that the first time. I didn't catch that. I, yet. I it, didn't it, realize um, it. Yeah, it's like ice. It's almost mm -hmm. like a, like very, very blue. cold air. Right. Yeah, it's like very cold air. Oh, I just noticed that now. I hadn't noticed that. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, because it doesn't, it looks, it looks like it could be smoke, but it looks more similar to like how that icy cold air looks, I think. Yeah, it gave me Potter vibes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see that. Did you, did you guys spot the, um, the maybe uh, Boba Fett armor? Yes, and I, I saw people talking about it, but I was like, I I know that um, this guy is supposed to be in this season, right? Tamara Morrison, yep. So maybe that's that's what it is. Maybe uh, we get some Boba. Or maybe he's not Boba, or maybe he's just a clone. That could be. So, um, so it's actually interesting. I don't think it was too big news. I mean, I caught it because I live for Star Wars, but um, Timothy Oliphant, um, which you can Google him. He's he's been in a lot of shows and movies. Um, late, late, lately, uh, the last one he was in uh, Santa Clara Diet. Santa Clarita Diet. Oh, Santa Diet. Clarita Diet. Mm -hmm. Right, the guy in that that's Timothy Oliphant. So he has been confirmed to play. Um, uh, his name is ex escaping me. I think it's called Vance. Vance something. So that character is in the Aftermath series. He's actually the guy that finds Boba's armor and he oh, I, know. I think he, you were telling us about him in one other last episode. Last time. 
Yeah, so I'm bringing it up now because he it's been confirmed that he it's it's that actor and that character oh. um, that he finds Boba's armor and he pretends to be Boba Fett. Yeah, I remember that. For like that. a while. <clears throat> um, he like tries to be like sheriff of a Tatooine town mm-hmm. and you know, so he so And we're going like, to Tatooine. And we're going to Tatooine and Tamura Morrison is in this so I think that he, Tamura that Boba's gonna reclaim his armor. That it might be oh, like, be cool. like B B plots, like where maybe he actually finds the Vance. Oh, Vance Cobb. That's his name. Yeah. Vance Cobb. Maybe he finds his Cobb character and is like, "Oh, you trying to be me? Well, I'm gonna have to get that back." And maybe he fights him, kills him, whatever. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think is. I mean, so as far as the actual make sense. itself. It, it, he's it's in the um the scene where it's like a speeder bike going away mm-hmm. you see like a jetpack and you see a helmet on the side and mm-hmm. it looks like a little bit green and people have been kind of dissecting it and it looks like it is boba's armor hmm yeah you know how would you guys confirmed, ha- but you know <laughs> has boba been confirmed to be alive yet in it since uh, um return of the jedi no right not officially, just this whole thing with Vance Cobb and finding his armor. So how uh, would you guys feel about him being alive? I think I think so. I, I think, again, it really just ties into this aftermath here. If the aftermath didn't go into that storyline and then they dr- jump into it now, I would have been like, all right, that's a little cold turkey, like a little bit too like cold. Mm-hmm. But since they've been building it up and with Tamara Morrison being casted, I'm going to have no problem. And I'm not going to be surprised if he's in it. I wouldn't mind either. I feel like we're talking about the Mandalorians, and I feel like we first fall in love with Mandalorians with Boba Fett, even though yeah. he's not considered he's Mandalorian, yeah. you know? And we saw a lot of, like, even um, Mando's weapon is from that um, special mm-hmm. with the pink dinosaur that I keep waiting for. Um, <laughs> so I wouldn't, I think it would be a nice homage to, like, where all this Mando armor started. Mm-hmm. Um, just, it doesn't even have to be such a big deal. It could be just like a little thing. I'll be okay with it. Um, and yeah, I move on and kind of like, he's also ties into like the Mandos that are bounty hunters. So yeah. I, I wouldn't mind. Okay. I don't know I mean, how I feel about Boba specifically being alive. Um, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> but I definitely want to see his armor. And I think if they tie in that Vance storyline, that would be... Pretty cool. super cool yeah because i want that i i feel like the books have opened up a lot of doors and the live action movies didn't really do anything about it so like i want to see the books tie in be tied in and not just be like a random like oh here's a book yeah so. there's so much content out there that it mm-hmm. will be nice to, what they're doing kind of throwing hints of, to some of the movies that we've seen with clone wars kind of tying into some of the stuff that we we've, we've been seeing so It'll be nice because it's not entirely about the book, but it's it'll tie into again mm-hmm. stuff that fans that are crazy fans like us will like really catch on. Like, oh look, Alexis told us about this whole clip it that's right. in the show. Not a big deal into the whole storyline, but it happened and we got to see it and we're happy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but I'm I, I mean, hyped. I'm hyped I, 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 even now more because like we talked we talked about things that I hadn't even realized. So I'm super excited, and I think I, I mean for the trailer that was it. Mm-hmm. We talked about everything, and I guess when October 30th comes and we watch that episode, we can do our first episode discussion. So Yay! I'm super excited! I am too. I'm actually doing um an article on Screen Rant later this week about theories for uh season two of mandalorian oh there we go we gave you a bunch <laughs> yeah i know right <laughs> like... i give you permission <laughs> um so that's cool guys so yeah if you guys want to tell them i know now we have it kind of here but it they kind of go off and on our names have our social media but mm-hmm. just in case i'm anna at la geeky life with two eyes how about you guys i'm julie from infinity jewels i'm pretty much all the social media and I'm Alexis, uh, Lex underscore Adamus on Instagram, uh, Alexis Adamus on Facebook, and yeah, hit me up. 
Sorry. You have a damis right there in the back. So if you, for those oh, yeah. that oh, don't yeah. know, how to, <laughs> and I have my little child here. <laughs> and my child, here. my shirt. <laughs> but uh, I miss you guys. It was super, super nice. I know. I can't up, wait. So. And we'll see each other all in a month, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and let us know, guys, if you have any other theories that or stuff that we didn't talk about. Mm -hmm. I know so many people are so spot on to and break down these trailers even more than we did. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, let us know if you found something. If, if something we said wasn't correct or you found something that we didn't talk about, definitely yeah. let us know. Yeah, definitely. make sure to subscribe and follow us on Facebook. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. This is the way. <laughs> this is the way.